Hey everyone, welcome to the Cobwebs YouTube channel where we are dusting off classic cinema. My name is Daniel and I am your host and we're going to be talking about Hammer Horror Movies on Scream Factory Blu-ray today. So if you don't follow my podcast, The Cobwebs Podcast, you might not know that I am a huge fan of Hammer Horror. Hammer was a studio back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s most predominantly that made a lot of gothic horror movies, in addition to a lot of other stuff that I am also very interested in. But it's that gothic horror that I'm really drawn to. In 1957, they made a movie called The Curse of Frankenstein, their own version of Frankenstein, uh, which was a little bit of a bold move because, you know, the Karloff, uh, James Whale version was so iconic. But they made their own version. They really made it their own. And it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And it spawned a whole run of gothic horror films back in that time period. So I love these movies with all my heart. Scream Factory has been releasing a ton of them to Blu-ray, which has been really exciting because uh, I've owned a lot of DVDs of Hammer over the over the years and Blu-rays were scarce for a long time. But Scream Factory has been doing amazing work, you know, along with some other companies like Indicator, a little bit of Warner Archive, a good bit from Mill Creek. Um, so yeah, a little bit of Kino too. But Scream Factory, I, I'm just loving what they're doing. Tons of special features, really nice special editions. And I'm almost a completionist with them. Uh, I have most of the releases and I wanna show you my entire collection of them right now. But there are four big Hammer releases from them I don't have and that's because I already own them on other Blu-ray formats. So I just wanna kinda of show those to you right off the bat. First of all, Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Uh, I believe this is the only slip-covered collector's edition uh, from Scream Factory's Hammer Horror Run that I don't have. And it's because I already have this older Blu-ray from Millenn Millennium Entertainment. And it already has quite a bit of special features and a good transfer, so haven't felt the need to go up to the Scream Factory version. Then also we got the Studio Canal Blu-rays, Rasputin the Mad Monk. The Devil Rides Again, and Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. So other than those and just a few other titles, I have most all of them. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, we'll start out with the slipcovered editions, because come on, I know that's that's what you guys want to see most, right? I mean, I know you're a bunch of slipcovered nuts. You should be ashamed. Uh, let's talk about Phantom of the Opera. So Phantom of the Opera, uh, this is my favorite version of the story. It's from 1962. It's directed by Terrence Fisher, who is the king of Hammer directors. Every Hammer director is really going off of Terrence Fisher's style. I mean, there are ones like, there are guys I really like, like Roy Ward Baker, like John Gilling, uh, but Terrence Fisher is the dude. This is a, it's such a good version of the story. One thing I really like about it is it gets rid of the romantic angle between the Phantom and Christine. And I understand if you don't like that. I know especially a lot of people really dig the tragic romance of Phantom of the Opera. I get it. But I don't know. It takes some of that creepiness away. And I really enjoy that. And uh, it, so it has a really good romance between Christine and this other dude. The Phantom is just like kind of this tragic figure that helps them. But, uh, you know, is ultimately doomed because he's the Phantom. And I love this mask. This mask is awesome. Uh, I was insanely excited when this Blu-ray came out. So happy to have it. Next, let's talk about The Kiss of the Vampire, which is a solid Hammer Vampire movie. Good. Solid. Not great. Hardly one of the best. Not by a long shot. But I enjoy it. And um, it's got a really cool original poster art right there. That's really fun. It's got a great climax where uh, a, a herd of bats. Herd? A flock? A group of bats attack people. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. So I dig this movie. And let's talk about a couple of Frankenstein movies. So we've got The Evil of Frankenstein. And Frankenstein Created Woman. So Frankenstein Created Woman is the fourth Hammer Frankenstein movie, but it's the third one directed by Terrence Fisher. And I think the first three Frankenstein movies from Hammer that Terrence Fisher directed is a perfect trilogy, an absolutely flawless trilogy of masterpieces. I love Frankenstein Created Woman. It's If you're expecting like the Hammer version of Bride of Frankenstein, it's not what this movie is. Not by a long shot, guys. Uh, this movie is very different, very original. I guarantee you it's completely unlike any other Frankenstein movie you have ever seen. And uh, I just love how bonkers it is, but it's also just a legitimately great, great movie. And then um, The Evil of Frankenstein is the third Hammer Frankenstein film. It's directed by Freddie Francis. And I don't like it that much, but I'm so happy to have the Scream Factory Blu-ray because this transfer is a unbelievable improvement from the DVD, all right? I have the DVD, and I always thought this movie was a terrible-looking film. Um, but it's not a terrible-looking film. That was really the DVD transfer. This Blu-ray really did a lot for it. Um, I didn't actually switch this around to the original cover art because I don't like the original cover art. You can see it right there. Very mediocre, but the Scream Factory cover art, I love. That's actually one of my favorite of these original slip covers that Scream Factory has done for Hammer. Uh, it's too bad it's for a movie that I don't care for that much. But like I said, 
Very, very happy to have this release anyway. It's still a gothic hammer movie, so I'll watch it. I'll watch it. The Brides of Dracula. Man, I was so excited when they announced this movie. I love this film. This is the second Hammer Dracula movie. And one thing that's crazy about it is it does not have Dracula in it. Um, they really decided like to follow Van Helsing instead of Dracula. So what this is, is a really great uh, vamp Van Helsing adventure where he fights vampires. And um, I mean, it's kind of a perfect movie when you think about it in that context. So don't be disappointed about the lack of Christopher Lee. Be happy about the presence of Peter Cushing because he's incredible in this film. All right. The last of the slip covered editions is the curse of the werewolf. This is a Blu-ray that I am I am just ecstatic that it exists and that I get to own it um, because I love this movie and I've always wanted it on Blu-ray. Uh, this is one of those movies that even if you're not like a hammer person, not a big hammer person, not a big classic gothic horror person, if you like horror movies, I think you have to own The Curse of the Werewolf. Uh, I just think it's such important horror history. It's a bonkers movie. Like if you don't love it, I get it. I totally understand. But it's important. And it's got Oliver Reed in an amazing performance as Leon, but also this werewolf. Incredible werewolf makeup right there. I love this original cover art. I mean, I realize it's just a face, but it's awesome. And now we're going to get into the non-slip covered. These are the standard Blu-rays, but there's a lot of cool stuff in here. I, I, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't love every movie on this stack, but um, let's just talk about them one by one. First of all, Lust for a Vampire, another release that I was just ecstatic when I heard about it. This is part of the Karnstein trilogy, three vampire films Hammer made in the 1970s that are all highly sexual and all centered around like female vampires and uh, are all centered around this Karnstein family. They're not really directly connected, but um, it's, it's a fun trilogy. This is the second one. It's my least favorite of the trilogy, but I was so excited about it because I'd always wanted to see this movie and it was very hard to see, very hard to get a hold of for a long time. And I'm so glad Screen Factory put it back into circulation. It is a kind of fun, bonkers movie. Um, not a great movie by any means, but I, I definitely enjoy it. There's some really cool gothic vampire imagery in this that's just super fun. Next up, The Reptile, directed by John Gilling, uh, actually made the same year, put out the same year as Plague of the Zombies, also directed by John Gilling. These two movies share a lot of the same um, cast members, sets, things like that. The Reptile is a cool movie because uh, one thing I like about it is it has a female monster, which, you know, the Universal Monsters movies were really bad about that. Again, is this going to happen every video? I swear I don't, I don't plan this. Should I just leave him? No, I'm going to take him down. I'm going to take him down. Come on, bud. Okay. Uh, the Universal Monsters were really bad about female monsters. I mean, there's Dracula's daughter. There is Bride of Frankenstein, but she's barely in that movie. But I don't know. I just thought uh, Hammer made a good effort to be inclusive with their monsters. And uh, she's really, really great in this movie. That's some great makeup. I don't love this movie. I don't think it's perfect or great by any means, but it's a fun Hammer flick. Plague of the Zombies, I love with all my heart, and I kind of consider it a perfect movie. Uh, this was the movie. I've talked about this a lot on my podcast, but... This was the movie that made me realize that I was a true Hammer fan. Like, I realized, oh, I'm not just a fan of Christopher Lee or Peter Cushing or Dracula or Frankenstein or werewolves. Like, I don't care. Like, I just love Hammer stuff. And um, I watched this movie for the first time on the Screen Factory Blu-ray on a very stormy night. And it was like one of those perfect viewing experiences. I love this movie so much. Check out the original art. Really, really enjoy that. Love both both cover arts. And uh, yeah, Plague of the Zombies does not get the credit it deserves for being an influential zombie movie. It came out two years before Night of the Living Dead. And um, it's pretty influential, I think. If you listen to my podcast, you've heard me talk about this a million times. I cannot shut up about <laughs> Plague of the Zombies. Okay, let's talk about these two in tandem. So because they've, they've got a very similar look. Scars of Dracula and Horror of Frankenstein. So... These are both parts of their respective franchises, both not so great uh, additions to their franchises. But let's talk about it. Scars of Dracula, you know, it is the sixth Hammer Dracula movie. And the whole gothic vampire Dracula thing in the series had kind of run its course by this point. This is uh, one of the lower points of the series. But I'm so, again, I'm so happy to own this Blu-ray because this movie looked like garbage. It looked terrible in home video before Screen Factory put this out. This is a great looking Blu-ray. And this movie jumped up in my estimation a lot when I watched this just because I wasn't distracted by how bad it looked. Um, you know, not a great movie, but it is cool that Christopher Lee gets the most dialogue he ever had in the series in this movie. It suffers from terrible protagonists, but Christopher Lee is great. And then we've got Horror of Frankenstein, 
which is a remake. It's a remake of Curse of Frankenstein. Some say a more comedic remake. I don't find it very comedic personally. Ralph Bates plays Victor Frankenstein. And I like Ralph Bates. I don't have a problem with recasting. I mean, I love Chris, uh, Peter Cushing. Love Peter Cushing. But re sure, recast him for a remake. That's fine. But he's one of the most unlikable main characters in a movie ever. And, you know, I'm not saying every character has to be likable, but he is insufferable to sit through this movie with. I don't really like Horror Frankenstein, but it, it's cool that it's on Blu-ray. I'm not I'm not super ecstatic about that one. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Quatermass and The Pit, I am ecstatic about. This was another one I saw for the first time on this Blu-ray because it was a little hard to get a hold of for a while. And this is a science fiction movie more than a horror movie. But when you watch this, you will realize, oh... This is where John Carpenter got Prince of Darkness from. I mean, he's not hiding that influence at all in the opening credits for Prince of Darkness. Uh, you'll see that John Carpenter had a screenwriting pseudonym of Martin Quatermass. Quatermass in the pit. Uh, so yeah, it has a lot in common with that movie. It's incredibly interesting. Has great lead performances from uh, Andrew Keir, right? Andrew Keir and Barbara Shelley. I love them in this film. Quatermass in the Pit is, is quintessential hammer. You absolutely got to have it. The Mummy Shroud, directed by John Gillian. This is the third Mummy film. And, you know, their Mummy f series is not great. But I like all the movies in the series, even though none of them are top hammer movies by any means. But, uh, you know, it's got Andre Bonral, which is cool, because he's the, he's the lead in Plague of the Zombies. So I'm happy to see him. Other than him, pretty terrible protagonist in this movie. But the mummy looks pretty cool in this, and I think that kind of makes up for a lot. It's a solid mummy. I kind of like mummy movies, you know, regardless of whether they're good or not. That's kind of a recent development in my horror love, because I, for a long time I didn't care about mummy movies. Give me vampires. Give me werewolves. I don't care about these mummies, but I like mummies now, so I'm kind of a sucker for them at this point. To the Devil, a Daughter came out in 1976 and is the movie that killed Hammer for a long time. Uh, this was really uh, the nail in their coffin and they didn't make another movie for a long time. I'm not going to lie to you guys about this one. I find this one really, really slow. But when it does get going, when the satanic horror starts, it's some scary, bizarre, crazy crazy ultra satanic horror and uh and, and there's some just really cool moments in this movie i mean i think you could put it up with the devil's reign as far as just how dark and satanic it really is um but other than that like for most of the runtime kind of a dull film not wild about that movie <sighs> okay fear in the night so this is the one i haven't technically finished this movie i've watched about two-thirds of it I found it incredibly dull, like far beyond to the devil a daughter. Uh, I didn't like this movie, but I haven't finished it. It does have Peter Cushing and it does have um, Joan Collins, which is cool. And Ralph Bates. Uh, so it's got a good cast. It's directed by Jimmy Sangster. I don't think Jimmy Sangster is much of a director. He was mostly a screenwriter. I mean, he wrote like horror of Dracula, curse of Frankenstein. And I believe curse of the werewolf as well. So big time screenwriter. I don't think he's much of a director, but I do need to finish that movie. And I do intend to, the Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, baby. Okay, this is Hammer Vampires meets Shaw Brothers Kung Fu. It sells itself. It's, no, it's not so bad it's good. It's legit awesome. I mean, this movie, it, it's fantastic. It absolutely rules. The Vampire Lovers. I think this was Screen Factory's first Hammer release. They put it out a long time before them putting out Hammer movies was like a thing. And um, this is the first in the Karnstein trilogy. And it's awesome. It's got Ingrid Pitt. This is, if, for my money, this is Ingrid Pitt's showcase horror role as Carmilla. Uh, she's basically the Dracula of this movie. She's incredible in the film. Peter Cushing's also in it. He's great. Uh, I, I kind of love everything about The Vampire Lovers. And if you like horror movies... You should own this movie and you should see this movie. It's an absolute must. The Witches. Uh, you know, this movie is not near as good as I wish a movie called The Witches from Hammer would be. Because I like witch horror. I like folk horror. This is definitely going for that. But it's super slow. And I don't feel like it ever really goes anywhere that interesting. Um, it's got Joan Collins. Sorry, not Joan Collins. Joan Fontaine in the lead role. Uh, you would know her from Rebecca, the Hitchcock classic. Uh, one of my very favorite Hitchcock movies. Um, this is just not a great movie. I don't know any way else to say it. Maybe one day I'll rewatch it and like it better. But for now, not wild about it. But now let's talk about a movie I am wild about. And that's Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. This is Hammer's second attempt at a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde adaptation. One thing that is cool about their adaptations of the story is they're both very, very original. Definitely check out The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll if you haven't yet. A very interesting telling of the story. Uh, but this one is 
maybe I think it's even better in my opinion. What's interesting about this movie is Ralph Bates plays Dr. Jekyll. This is my favorite Ralph Bates, by the way. And his Mr. Hyde is actually a woman played by Martine Beswick. And, you know, I, I'm just a cis straight dude. I can't really talk about this, but I, I have noticed like in online communities how this movie seems to have been really embraced by a lot of horror loving transgender people. And uh, I, th- I just think that's really cool. Um, it, it definitely, it has something to say about the fluidity of gender. I mean, if you do look at the Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde, uh, sorry, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde classic story, it is about Mr. Hyde being the symbol of freedom and being the inner self let loose. And I think, I think certain people really identify with that uh, in the context of this movie. And I think that's awesome. But other than that, it is just an ultra violent exploitation flick of the highest order. It's got great performances, beautiful sets and beautiful fog. It's ultra Gothic. Um, This is one of those perfect hammer movies for me. I I love everything about it. Captain Kronos vampire hunter. Uh, This is one that means a lot to a lot of people. A lot of people absolutely love this. I hear this named as one of people's favorite Hammer movies, like, all the time. Um, And it's not one of mine. Uh, You know, I don't care for this lead actor who plays Captain Kronos. He's not very interesting. Uh, I don't think the action's that great. The villains leave a lot to be desired. I mean, the vampires are not true vampires. And, uh, And I'm okay with switching things up, but what they switch it up to is not very interesting. I think actually, um, I think we did a really good episode of this on the Cobwebs podcast, so I would invite you to check that out. I did it with Michael Scott from the Atkins Undisputed podcast, so he's like an action movie expert. And I thought we dug into this movie pretty well. A lot of these movies I've covered much more in depth on the Cobwebs podcast, so if you're interested, check that out. A lot of hammer talk on there. And okay, last up. The Abominable Snowman of the Himalayas, or really just called The Abominable Snowman. Um... I like this movie. If you are expecting a lot of monster action, a lot of cool practical monster effects and stuff like that of Abominable Snowman, you might be disappointed. I would definitely liken this movie to being like a Twilight Zone episode. Uh, A lot of it is guys climbing up a mountain, talking, and a lot of the interpersonal drama going on there. But it is interesting the whole way through. It does have Peter Cushing in it, by the way. Uh, This is a very early Hammer movie. It is in black and white. Um, But once they do get to Abominable Snowman, I don't think it disappoints. I think it's really eerie and strange. And uh, and I was not disappointed at all by the ending of this movie. So I really like it. So that's it, guys. That is my whole collection of Hammer Horror on Scream Factory Blu-ray. Let's look at the stack here. So I am missing a few titles, uh, Quatermass 2 for one, Demons of the Mind, Straight On Till Morning. So there are a few that I haven't picked up yet, and I do intend to. I want to be a completionist with these, if only because I'm so close already. But that's it. That is my collection of Hammer Horror on Screen Factory Blu-ray. So what about you? Are you a fan of any of these movies? Are you a Hammer Horror nut? Has Screen Factory maybe increased your love for Hammer Horror because of increased accessibility? Now you can check these movies out. Let me know. Comment down below. Tell me what you're thinking. Uh, make sure to leave us a like and a subscribe. we got a lot more cool uh, movie-related videos on the way. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. We'll talk about moral movies next time.